Welcome to Access a Trader, the number one community for those who are committed to taking control of their trading in order to achieve success, profitability, and longevity. Thank you for joining us. Here's Dan Shapiro to help you find your edge, master your process, and own your future. Hey guys, good evening everybody. Welcome to another edition of uh, the AccessToTrader.com weekend update show. Hope everybody is having a great weekend. Uh, before we even go on any further, uh, I want to wish all the moms out there, all the moms out there, an awesome, awesome, happy, happy, joy, joy uh, Mother's Day weekend. Uh, I personally think it's a tragedy that only one day is devoted to the awesome moms out there. Every single day, all of us should be praising the God that they gave us a mother that gave birth to us, who loves us and we're there through thick and thin. So all the moms out there, God bless. Hope you guys have an absolute unbelievable uh, weekend. For the rest of us, uh, for the rest of us who are fixated on the market, you gotta get your fixed as well. So let's talk about it, right? Uh, Weeks and weeks and weeks, linear market, right? Linear market. Bears, the earnings are going to be bad. Nobody cares. The market goes higher, right? The bears had nothing left on the agenda. The only thing that the bears had left was the idea that gravity was real. I mean, again, if you've been watching this broadcast on the weekend, especially on the weekend update, you kind of know my theory of shrinking channels, contracting channels on a linear move. And I've been saying this for several weeks, not because I was guessing or I was forecasting any of the sort. It's just logic. Anytime a market that goes linear one way or another starts contracting channels, the idea, especially in the upside, the idea of gravity is real. It's just real. Now they just needed a catalyst, right? The bears just needed a catalyst or almost like a Hail Mary shot to kind of make their dreams come true. Again, if you're shorting the market from the word from the word last November, again, long term, I don't believe anybody's even still short. But again, how much money do you have, you know, holding on to your short positions? But that's a whole different story. So the Bears needed a catalyst, okay? And Sunday night, or it was either Sunday night or Saturday night, whatever it was, uh, President Trump announced that we have like a week, right? The, the Chinese have a week. And if they don't uh, do what they have to do to make this trade war kind of go away, they're going to raise tariffs and they're going to raise tariffs 25%. The one thing that the markets hate more than anything else, and this trumps, pun intended, this even trumps technical analysis, the market hates uncertainty. Okay, There's a difference between volatility and there's a difference between volatility Okay, in either a political, okay, economic, worrisome cloud that hangs above us. And what I mean by that is... You can have a political event, okay, if it is stronger than any technical setup that you're going to take, your technical setup is going to be compromised. And if the Bears needed any ammunition going into this week, okay, they got their ammunition. They got their wall, uh, their wall of worry, okay, they got their uncertainty, and they had every single ability to really take the bulls by the horn and run them into the ground, okay? And this is kind of where we talk about, and again, if we've been watching this broadcast for a couple of years now, you kind of know that, again, the myth, traders love volatility until things get volatile, right? So when you have technical analysis, and I've, I've, I've always lived by this scenario, okay? I don't care what your opinion is on the trade, right? I can love Tesla, you can hate Tesla. I can hate Tesla, you can love Tesla. It doesn't make a difference. Technical analysis is going to make us right, right? I, I've always said this in every single video that our, you know, our opinions mean absolutely nothing, right? Mean absolutely nothing. The market is either going to dictate buyers cleaning up sellers or sellers cleaning up buyers. Stop me if you, when you've heard that before, okay? But the 1% shot, the 1% chance that technical analysis kind of doesn't matter is when there is a wall of worry, there is confusion, there is unrest. There is uh, every single opinion goes out the way. And then you have kind of knee-jerk reactions. And we saw the whole week, literally the whole week of we're going to get a deal done. We're not going to get a deal done. Chinese premier, whatever the hell he's called, 
sends a beautiful love letter to Trump. Trump responds, everything is all good again. Then the United States comes out and says, well, China has reneged, right? Has reneged on certain sticking points. You know, we don't need them. We have plan B. And the market really showed how uncertainty could affect trading, how it certainly could affect especially technical analysis. And if you're a new trader, okay, and you're still fighting with your own demons, fighting with yourself to control your emotions, an unrested market, a volatile, headline-driven, news-driven market, okay, it's going to really expose everything that you don't know times 100, okay? And the one thing that we kept on saying over and over again this week uh, in the live webinar was, as soon as you put on a trade, whatever the case may be, okay, we are almost we were just literally waiting for that next headline to come and destroy the trade, right? And we saw that literally the whole week. So this week we were we were not only trying to take advantage on the other side of our trade, like we always do, you know, with, you know, with these uh, pivots uh, compromising an edu educated trader, we were also keeping one eye, okay, on the on a potential that another tweet, okay, this is what we have to fight against. Another tweet had come and destroyed our trade. So that's what we were up against. And I kept on reiterating the point in our, uh, in our live webinar that this week is almost to the point that less was more, okay? We're obviously still looking for value and we kind of knew where the headlines were gonna drop. Usually you don't get these headlines at the open or like 11, 12 o'clock. You usually have this, all these random headlines around 1.30, 2 o'clock. We kind of saw that every single day, every single day. And we saw tremendous volatility this week, absolutely crazy volatility this week. The market's going down 500 to rallying back down 100, and which, which 10 years ago, 15 years ago, any time a market would open up down 500 and rally 400 points off the bottom, it was like a five-star overnight the next day. The only problem was the next day the Dow opened up down another 250, 300 points. So this week we saw sellers, right, emotional sellers get trapped on the bottom, okay? And we saw emotional buyers coming off that massive reversal at the bottom, getting caught at the close because the market had gapped down another 300 points. So this was a very, very unusual week. We saw shorts get trapped, walked up into the highs, and then we saw longs get trapped, walked into the highs, and then selling right back at the lows. And with all the craziness, with all the madness, with all the unrest, with all the confusion, with all the headlines, you saw some pretty aggressive, uh, you know, pretty aggressive moves down uh, in all the indexes, uh, S&P, NASDAQ, uh, and the Dow, down 2-3% each, pretty big moves. The good news was, okay, uh, the good news was that there wasn't a lot of fear, okay, even though despite we saw a lot of 400-point moves, 500-point moves, there wasn't a lot of fear. And what the indexes did do, if that's even English, my English teacher will probably be rolling over in her grave, um, but the one thing that we did do was, and I speak from the NASDAQ 100 point of view, we did hold a major sticking point, which is the rising 50-day moving average. It even got to the point of when we lost the 50-day moving average on Friday morning, the fact that we got a headline to save it, again, at the end of the day, nobody cares about the scoreboard. Nobody cares about how it got there. The point is they actually got there. And the key going into this week is now that we got a lot of the crazy news out of the way, right? And a lot of traders are using this weekend, well, number one, hopefully spending with their loved ones and having uh, an amazing time with their moms. But I, I think it also gives traders the ability to kind of digest exactly what happened. Okay. And I think that's a very, very important point. You know, fact, we've been talking about China now for about a year, year and change. So the fact that nothing got solved, but again, they're dangling that carrot in front of our face saying, don't worry, it will get things done, we will get things done, we will get things done. Matter of fact, we've spent the last couple of days uh, with the Chinese, we're ironing things out, everything's all good. And we saw that really pretty aggressive rally uh, into the close on Friday. And again, you talk about, you know, you talk about an unfair advantage and people knowing things in the options market. There was a guy, and I tweeted this out, if you guys, all you guys who follow me on Twitter, there was a guy who bought with three hours left to go. He bought, he wagered $120,000 on the queues with three hours left, the weekly queue calls of the weekly queue, the weekly queues, $3 out of the money, okay, $3 out of the money, 
when the NASDAQ was still down like 60, 70 handles. And as soon as he put on this bet, this market exploded, absolutely exploded. So do people know things? Again, you decide. But again, orderly, you know, there's always a level playing field somewhere, allegedly. So uh, crazy week. Uh, I thought the week was solid. OK, I, I, I thought the week was solid uh, in trading uh, like Wednesday, for example, just to give you an example on Wednesday. Wednesday, we probably had, what was it Thursday? It could have been Wednesday or Thursday. Uh, if you go through my time, a timeline on Twitter, you'll see. Um, we had one of the more, it was Thursday, it was Thursday. We had one of the more aggressive opens that we saw. Like literally, Tesla went down like three, four dollars, and uh, Square ran up like five, and Netflix went down like four. And we had this really, really massive move. And if you missed that move, right, if you missed that move, the rest of the day, you saw a really, really chop fest type of environment. And we did see that throughout the week. The same thing pretty much happened every single day. You caught the open, whether you caught or missed the open is a whole different story. But you traded the open, you try to trade it as aggressive as possible, and then you put up your shield, right? You put up your shield not only for the headline, but for the massive chop that was to follow. Because again, at the end of the day, who really wanted to be long or short going over this weekend, right? I mean, raise your hand if you feel really comfortable with your position one way or another. And the fact that it made this week, the fact that it made traders really overthink their scenarios and kind of have their emotional levels risen extra, extra higher, I could see how a lot of traders this week overthought trades, missed trades, or the fact that they were on alert at a potential tweak and really can really adjust the, you know, ju just their trade. I can see how people messed up trades uh, this week as well. And I, I, I will say this much. I will say this much. Going into next week, I do believe that we will have a more orderly, okay? I do believe we'll have a more orderly balance just because of, of over this weekend that people, especially traders, will digest all of last week's events understand that we kind of got nowhere, okay, despite numerous tweets throughout the week. And, and again, I, I've said this over and over again. At some point, I don't care if you're for Trump, against Trump, it doesn't make a difference. These tweets have got to stop, okay? These apps, these tweets, every single time the White House has a bowel movement and something happens, they, they have to tweet about it. Just stop tweeting. Again, at the end of the day, nobody, I'm sick of hearing about the labor pains, just show us the baby, right? Segue into Mother's Day. Again, happy Mother's Day. So it's very, very important that I think traders really digest this information, kind of process it, realize that nothing really has changed uh, from this week to the previous weeks, to the previous months. And hopefully, again, fingers crossed, that we can have a more structural balanced market this week compared to the headline driven knee-jerk reaction that we expected, literally expected uh, every single day. So fingers crossed. Overall, uh, I thought the week was solid. I thought Thursday, uh, like put it this way, there was six, six pivots on Thursday, okay? And they all pivoted at the same time. Roku, Square, excuse me, Roku, uh, Tesla, NVIDIA, Microsoft, Apple, like everything. I caught, I mean, everything pivoted at the same time. And unless you're a robot, I don't know how you can trade like more than one or two of these things at the same time because we're so emotionally connected to see these trades. And when you get a pivot on Tesla, for example, when I trade Tesla, I trade it on Thursday and I get the pivot down, it goes down two, three points. It's very, very tough to say, oh, by the way, let me, let me shorten the video as well and put more equity, more mental equity, something like that. So even though we had a really, really aggressive, for example, Thursday open, you know, it really did burn a lot of mental equity. And the one thing about mental equity is you don't get it back. So when you recognize the rest of the day is going to be filled with more of a quote unquote chop factor, you really have to start decompressing and almost take what the market gives you on face value. Um, I, I thought Friday's session was fine. Okay. Um, I thought Friday's session was the, the, the funny thing is, I, I think I was more, I, I think I was more active on Friday than I was uh, any other day uh, this week, which is crazy because usually people use Fridays as well. Let me, you know, let me, let me just rest on Friday, take it easy. For some reason, Fridays for me, uh, and then every Friday I start out the same way. I say, well, I'm going to take it a little bit easier. And the next thing you know, I'm trading like nonstop. So let's talk about the pivots uh, from Friday session. Some good value, some really, really good value. Um, beyond, uh, for all you guys who traded beyond this week, great job. There was two really monster pivots 
uh, that I put in the channel. One on Thursday from that 79 area went down to like 71. Huge, huge move. And this pivot on Friday was really good as well. Uh, so beyond, doc, uh, I was going to say beyond.com. So beyond meat, right? So here is the pivot. Here's the pivot. And I talked about it right here. Has held 67 several times. If it build, builds below, could flush. Here was the whole 67 line, 6710, 6705, 67, 67, 67, 67. Once it broke 67, it went all the way down to 61. Uh, really, really big move. Uh, Roku, there was uh, several scenarios. Uh, and again, what you're, for all you guys who are joining us for the first time here, uh, what you're looking at is the stock Twitch feed, the private stock Twitch feed, and uh, we have uh, the private Twitter feed. It's exactly the same thing. So whatever I put in the private Twitter feed, I put in this private stock Twitch feed, and obviously... Uh, we have everything else uh, in the live webinar, including the balance plays that you guys don't see because, again, we strictly want to keep it to uh, pivots. But uh, so this is a really, really big move. Uh, Roku, I gave uh, a pretty good three three separate ways scenario to play this thing. Uh, I said, look, you could buy it off the 60-minute support of 679. If it holds, it could bounce. It never got there. Uh, also, for the aggressive traders, I, I kept on saying, you know, keep an eye on the red to green trade. Obviously, red to green is not a pivot. It has nothing to do about a pivot. It's all about the previous day momentum. So you had the 79 potential balance, the red to green. And I did note the natural pivot will be over 84. And if you look at Roku and how it played out, it played out exactly, you know, the only thing it didn't do was just bounce, but it went red to green. And that's where I bought it. It went red to green. And then once it pivoted above that 84, which was the natural pivot, Big, big move. It went all the way up to 86.50. So really, really nice job. Good job for the laser guys uh, who caught uh, Roku uh, as well. Tesla, what, what, I forgot to, what I forgot to tweet here uh, for the private Twitter feed was there was a sneaky pivot that we were watching on Tesla at 37 and change. I forgot to put it into the channel. So we shorted, uh, we shorted Tesla. And it went down about a dollar or so. So I took off and I noticed it was stalling as the futures were ripping because, of course, another headline came out. So I noticed Tesla was stalling out. So I covered two thirds of my position on Tesla and then the res break even. So that was fine. Uh, JD, JD never got there. Dropbox never got there. Uh, Cargill never got there. Uh, Boeing towards the end of the day, uh, I tweeted this out. Watch the 352.70. 353. If it builds, it can hold, it can go. So here was Boeing as well, right? Here was Boeing as well. Here was the three, uh, 353 area. Monster move here went to three, almost 356. Um, and here's where I got frustrated. Here's where I got like really, really upset. So I shorted Tesla here. Uh, excuse me. I shorted Netflix here. So we, we shorted it off the, we shorted off this number. And the problem, when you have a market that is waiting for a shoe to drop or some sort of news to hit, whatever the case may be, the active market participants are not going to sit there with two, 3,000 share lots in both direction, you know, soaking up order flow. Netflix, you know, I shorted Netflix. It goes down like two and a half, three points. The problem was I got filled on like 10% of my position. And, you know, the one thing, and I was, and you, all, all you guys in the live webinar, you saw me just really being like a really big baby about it. Because again, you just watch the stock go down two, three points, you got 10% of your position, it's going to hurt. So for all of us who have been trading for a long time, the, the, the idea of us, when you have a losing trade, it's fine. You know, you have a losing trade. We'll talk about, I'll talk about my Amazon losing trade on Friday. Um, so I shortened Netflix, it goes down two and a half, three, uh, three points. Problem is... I only got filled on 10% of my position, which really, really annoyed me, uh, which kind of sucked. So uh, I was trading that, traded Roku, traded Roku, traded Tesla. Tesla was fine. I thought it was going to be better, but Tesla was fine. And Amazon, I, I, I think I traded Amazon the right way the first time around. So I bought it off the support. I mean, you guys are not going to see, you guys are going to see this as Bollinger Band is down. So I bought it off support, right? And my risk was like three bucks in the trade because the bottom of the Bollinger Band was, was $3 lower. So Amazon went up like two, three points, no, not even two, three points, I apologize. Amazon went up like maybe a dollar and a half, two dollars, and then stopped me out. So I lost three points on Amazon. And then I, I, I kind of I, I kind of did something that I usually tell trades never to do, and don't anticipate. You know, everything that I do is 99% of the time is confirmation. 
But what I did was when the buyers came back over the same level, I anticipated it and actually holding this time and rallying right back. And the problem was I knew the high that it put up off that first bounce was going to be that 1984, 1985 level. All I needed to do was wait to, to reclaim that 1985 level and I would have been golden because if you notice what happened here, right? If you notice, excuse me, what happened here towards the end of the day, once it reclaimed 1985, the damn thing put up a $17 candle. So I kind of costed myself money the second time. And again, the, the second entry on Amazon only cost me about $1.50. So in total, it cost me $4.50 on the trade. But it was a, it, it's not an expensive lesson. It was a more stupidity lesson that I knew what I was doing was wrong the second time around. And I still did it. And if I, all I had to do, right, all I had to do was wait for it to just kind of reclaim the 85, which I knew was the high from the previous bounce. All I needed to do was reclaim it. I could, have, could have, you know, I could have caught a 17 point move. So again, we continue to be, we, we continue to be our own worst enemies. Okay. And there's nothing more that irritates me more than anything else is kind of shooting myself in the foot because all these mistakes. And again, again, remember, remember this folks, if you're trading for 20 days, 20 weeks, 20 months, or like me, 20 years, okay, you're going to continuously fight with yourself. Okay. The only difference is as you get deeper in the game, as you get more mentally sound and mentally ready every single day and your confidence that you can walk on water is really shown in your trading and your consistency, that kind of goes away, but it's a nonstop battle. And we always constantly talk about this in the live webinar. And if we're in a perfect world, if we don't shoot ourselves in the foot throughout the year, you'll probably see 20, 25% more profits in your account. But again, we're human, we bleed, we cry, we laugh, and you know what? We're gonna shoot ourselves in the foot. The key is to minimize that, obviously, going forward. So going into this week, look, you want to give the bulls a little bit of a leeway, okay? I'm not bullish this week. I'm not bearish. I kind of want to see what happens next, right? Because if you look at what the Qs did, Qs re reclaimed the 50-day. However, when you look at what Amazon did, it's still below supply, right? It lost its support, and now it's below supply. If you look at Tesla, right? If you look at Tesla, right? Tesla, I still think Tesla's 27, 28 level, okay? If you look at Netflix, right? It's above support, okay, hanging on. Alibaba, again, really in no man's land. You have NVIDIA and kind of in no man's land. You have Baidu, kind of in no man's land. You know, Roku's very, very strong, really good earnings. Uh, this is one you want to buy on dips into the 60-minute support. And as we've seen all week, and I've been tweeting these uh, bounce plays in real time, and I've been saying, hey, look, these eager shorts, aggressive shorts are, are emotionally selling at the bottom of the 60-minute channel. <laughs> and if they get trapped, they're going to squeeze right back. And you, you, for those of you guys who are following me on Twitter, you constantly saw that over and over and over again. The shorts are trapped at the bottom of the range. So that's kind of what we're looking for on Roku this week, or at least the next couple of days. Uh, a washout into the 60-minute support, and if they hold, you want to get long uh, for possible move back uh, to the highs. But again, many charts are still in no man's land. Apple, again, you can make a claim they held the 50-day, blah, 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 blah. Square, you know, no man's land as well. Semiconductors just look like absolute crap because, again, the semiconductors are going to be very, very effective. There's some sort of Chinese, you know, Chinese big tariff thingamajiggy, right? Think about where they, where they make their ships. So the semiconductors... Uh, you know, really got you know, really got hit this week as well. So I, I want to give the Bulls the benefit of the doubt, but I have no problem switching gears very, very quickly and going back to the short side on on, on a moment's notice. Because again, as a professional trader, you don't have that luxury. The, you know, the market will not give you that luxury to paint yourself in a bias, paint yourself in a corner, and just trade in one direction. You have to have a two-sided strategy and to make sure your edge lies on. Uh, your process. So uh, let me give you guys some ideas uh, for uh, this week. Look, I was shorting Tesla pretty much the whole week. Um, the whole week, again, ever since it broke uh, the, the five, 10 day moving average, especially in the last several days, I was literally shorting it the whole week. A Thursday, I caught a really good trade in it. Um, I still think if this thing starts confirming the bottom channel, it will test this 228, 230 level. Uh, there was some aggressive put buying this week selectively. Uh, some dude bet like 2.4 million next June's uh, next June's 200 puts. There were some pretty aggressive uh, bets on uh, Tesla. We saw a lot of the 230 May 230 
uh, puts being driven. So I still like it. I, I, again, I trade both sides. I have no bias. I, I root for Tesla, but again, I have no uh, no love for it. Uh, I'm, I'm only loving I'm only loving the directional bias confirmation. So I still think I'm watching the channels. We're really watching the channels uh, to the downside, obviously for a potential really aggressive. Uh, waterfall flush. The only way I'll get bullish on Tesla if it starts reclaiming, um, you know, 259, 260, and the top of this channel here. Um, I like Miele. Uh, Miele had some pretty good earnings. Uh, came in pretty orderly. Tested the 10-day. Uh, closed above supply. You know, if Miele starts building above uh, 559, 560, I kind of like this move uh, potential to the 570 area, and then ultimately uh, to the highs. Let me see what else I like here I want to share with you guys. Um, Roku I like as well. Uh, Pep, Pepsi, nice looking chart. Keep an eye on Pepsi. Um, starts building 128 and a half, looks pretty good. Uh, take two, interactive video games. Uh, first close right on the 50 day moving average. If it could reclaim, let's just call it 104, you'll start getting an upward bias, potential 110 depending uh, market conditions and look at Microsoft. Microsoft is starting to uh, rev back up and a nice move into supply. All it needs to do is reclaim supply again, contingent on the market being good. And if it could reclaim 128, it could start its next leg up. So for all you guys who are joining us in the live webinar tomorrow or Monday, uh, please get there at nine o'clock Eastern time. That's when we go through all the pivots, all the bounces. Uh, for all you guys who can't make the live webinar or work for a living, uh, the private Twitter feed is is really should be up your alley. It's only 40 bucks a month. Uh, and by the way, you get the full four hour PS60 workshop breaking down this, this theory and nausea. Uh, you got the whole option report, um, nightly email, nightly video and all that good stuff. It's a tremendous value. It's only 40 bucks a month for all you guys who can't make the live webinar, who want to still participate in this whole uh, in this whole pivot thing of ours. For the rest of you guys, have an awesome Mother's Day. God bless you all. Hug your mother, kiss her. You only have one mom. That's it. You don't get a redo. You get one mom. And the most important thing is tell her you love her. Don't take anything for granted and just be a good human being. Guys, God bless. Enjoy the rest of your weekend. Congratulations for putting in the time to take control of your trading. You're one step closer to owning your future and achieving the success you desire. Want daily trade ideas directly from Dan, straight off his personal watch list? Unlock our free PS60 Vault, where you'll get nightly updates on pivot opportunities we're watching for the next day's session. Click the link in the description to get started today.